So this is question one. Um, it says, based on the passage, with the, which of the following is closest to the pressure exerted on the chest by a 10 by 5 standing room rectangular paddle during defib? All right, so we're going to notice first that um, looks like our answers are going to be in pascals. So we're going to convert the uh, 10 by 5 rectangular paddle into meters. Um, now, what we have to know is that pressure is equal to force applied over an area. Um, this area, like I said, has to be a meter squared. So instead of 10 by 5 centimeters, we're going to convert that into 0 0.1 meters, right? Because 10 centimeters is 0 0.1 meters by 0 0.05 meters, because 5 centimeters is 0 0.05 um, meters. So we get that out, and we get 0 0.005 meters squared. That's going to be our area. And that's the same as 5 times 10 to the negative 3 meters squared. So that's the area. And if we go back to the passage, we'll notice that the force that we have to use is 100 newtons. So we're basically applying, um, on this rectangular paddle, we're applying 100 newtons of force over 5 times 10 to the negative 3 meters squared. So we can just calculate that out pretty simply. That's 100 newtons over 5 times 10 to the negative 3 meters squared. That's equal to, well, this is 10 squared newtons over 5 times 10 to the negative 3 meters squared. That's equal to 10 to the 5 over 5 um, newtons over meters squared. And that's going to be the same as 2 times 10 to the 4th um, pascals. Now, we'll notice that all of these are written in um, kilopascals. So um, kilopascals is equal to 10 to the 3 pascals. Um, so we can convert this into kilopascals. So 2 times 10 to the 4th pascals, we multiply that out by one kilopascal for every 10 to the 3 pascals. There we go. And we get 20 kilopascals. So the answer is going to be 20 kilopascals, D. So this is question two of the passage. It states, if the defib described in the passage were fully charged and the entire charge is discharged or were discharged to a patient in 10 milliseconds, which of the following is closest to the average electrical current that would flow through the paddles? So fully charged, what does that mean? Well, we have to consider this equation right here, Q equals CV. So this is for capacitors when they are fully charged, where C is the capacitance and V is the volts. So if we go back into the diagram, we'll notice that the volts is 3,000 and 25 microfarad is the capacitance. So what does that mean? 25 microfarad, that's going to be 25 times 10 to the negative 3 farads, right? And 3,000 volts. Well, if we do the, uh, the math here, that's 25 times 10 to the negative 3 times 3 times 10 to the negative 3. Um, or sorry, not 10 to the negative 3, sorry, 10 to the positive 3. And we'll notice that's going to be 75, um, 75 coulombs, right? Uh, sorry, not micro, it's not 10 to the negative 3, it's 10 to the negative 6. Um, yeah, so microfarad, that's actually 10 to the negative 6 farad, not 10 to the negative 3, sorry. So this is going to be 75. Um, I'll redraw this right here. So let's start that over. It's actually going to be 25 times 10 to the negative 6 farads times 3 times 10 to the 3 volts, and that gives us 75 times 10 to the negative 3 coulombs, right? So 75 times 10 to the negative 3 coulombs, that's the full charge of the capacitor. And then when we um, discharge it, it's going to be over 10 milliseconds. So that's going to be 75 times 10 to the negative 3 coulombs over 10 milliseconds. So 10 to the negative 3 seconds. Right, so remember, um, 10 milliseconds, milliseconds, that's 10 to the negative 3 seconds, so that's 10, to the negative, 10 times 10 to the negative 3 seconds. Um, we'll notice that all of the units are in amps, so this is the same units you would use for current, right? Um, so amps is the measure of uh, coulombs per second, so that's why we're using these units right here, coulombs per second. And we'll notice if we do the math, do the math here, that's going to be 7.5 coulombs per second, which is the same as 7.5 amps, or amperes, sorry, and that's going to be A. So 7.5 is the answer to this question. This is the third question of this passage. It says, if both the capacitor and the power supply in figure one are adjustable, which of the following changes would result in an increase in the charge of the capacitor? All right, so there's a few, there's one formula actually that you do have to, well, maybe two, yeah, you have to 
keep in mind here, remember the charge is Q equals CV, the charge of the capacitor is CV, or C is based on this constant or this equation right here, the capacitance um, area over distance. All right, so K is a dielectric constant. This is the permittivity constant. Um, this is going to be the area of the capacitor plates, and this is the distance between the two plates. So let's think about this. A, decreasing the area of the parallel plates. Well, if we decrease the area, right, that means the value of C will go down, capacitance. And if C goes down, then Q also will decrease in value as well. So the answer can't be A. Um, let's see, decreasing the separation between the parallel plates. Now let's think about that. If we decrease D, distance, you're going to increase the C, and if you increase C, you increase Q, right? So B does look like it'd be the correct answer here. So let's um, keep that in mind. Um, C, removing the dielectric from the capacitor. If you remove K, now K will always be greater than 1, okay? So if you remove K, that means you're actually decreasing C. For example, if K was equal to 1.5, um, but you get rid of it, now you're, the, the C value is going to be de decreasing um, by a factor of 1.5. So if you remove K, you're decreasing C, decreasing C, right, decreasing Q. Same thing as we said before. So it can't be C. Yeah. And finally, decreasing the voltage of the power supply. If you decrease the voltage, you're going to be decreasing the Q as well, so it can't be D either, meaning B has to be the correct answer for this question. All right, so this question states, if the 25 microfarad capacitor in the defibrillator in figure one is replaced with a 30, microfarad um, capacitor, what new power supply setting would produce the same amount of charge? So what voltage would you need to get the same amount of charge? Again, looking at the same equation, Q equals CV. Um, they're saying here now they're changing the value of C, so how should we change the value of U such that Q stays the same? So um, unless you you know, didn't see that last video, um, we did figure out that the Q value will be 75 uh, microcoulombs, or sorry, millicoulombs. Uh, but in case you guys didn't see that that part of this video, I will a part of that video. I'm going to um, run over how we did it. So again, 25 microfarads times 10 to the negative 6 farads. The voltage, if we look at the diagram, is 3,000 volts, right? So it's 3,000. So 3 times 10 to the neg uh, 10, 10 to the 3, sorry, volts, and that provides us with 75 times 10 to the negative 3 coulombs, same as 75 microcoulombs. So now we're changing it, changing this to a 30 microfarad capacitor. And what's the voltage to get 75 uh, millicoulombs? 75 times 10 to the negative 3 coulombs has to equal 30 times 10 to the negative 6 farads times the new voltage, V. So let's do the math here. 75 times 10 to the negative 3 um, coulombs divided by 30 times 10 to the negative 6 farads. So if we do this, that's 10 to the 3 up there. And then if we do uh, all this, this is actually 2.5. And so we end up with 2.5 times 10 to the 3 uh, volts. And that turns out to be 2,500 volts. So that's going to be our answer, D.